All right, it's 9.30, you wanna get started? Okay. Call the meeting to order. This is the uh, Ventura County Assessment Appeals Hearing for April 26, 2016. 9.30 a.m. is the starting time. I guess we'll call to order. Uh, myself, uh, I'm Jim R. Crow. I'm the hearing officer for today. I guess uh, the everyone will stand and pledge the allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If you could remain standing, I'm going to place you all under oath. I'll go over here so I can get inside and not sit at the same time. If you guys want to stand, I'm going to put everyone under oath right now. Great. Please raise your right arm. When I complete reading your oath, please state I do. You and each of you to solemnly affirm that the testimony you're about to give and the matters now pending before this hearing officer will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. You may now be seated. <laughs> comes later on. <laughs> okay, we'll start off with agenda review by the uh, clerk of the board. Yes, uh, item five, agenda review for April 26th. The clerk of the board recommends approval of the agenda review by the hearing officer. The agenda review consists of the following agenda items. Item nine, uh, application 1510, applicant Gilberto Garcia. Denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 11, application number 1510023, applicant Rena Boat. Denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 12, application number uh, 1510024, applicant Stanley Hubble. Denied due to lack of appearance. Application number 13, application number 1510038, applicant Scott. Bayer, removed from the agenda due to submission of a withdrawal. Item number 14, application number 1510043, applicant Neil A. Lasco, DDS, a professional corporation, Neil Lasco, continue to May 24th, 2016, pending receipt of original stipulation. Item number 16, application number 1510125, applicant Rita Gutierrez, continue to May 24th, 2016, Pending receipt of original stipulation. Item number 17, application number 1510126, one, applicant Heather Ford, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 18, application number 1510132, one, applicant Eric Zirnight, uh, denied due to lack of appearance. Item 19, application number 1510256, applicant Daniel Pierce, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 20, application number 1510284, applicant Island Health and Fitness, SV Incorporated, uh, Jesus Ferramontes, denied due to lack of appearance. Uh, item number 22, uh, application number 1510335, applicant Bill Mozzi III. Denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 26, application number 1510454, applicant Mar Martha Alvarez, uh, removed from the agenda due to submission of a withdrawal. Item number 31, application number 1510861, applicant Martin Evans, removed from the agenda due to submission of a withdrawal. Item number 32, application number 1510709, applicant Frank Tapori, uh, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 33, application number uh, 1510721 only. Applicant Omid Moore, uh, spell last name, M O R A D S H A H I, denied due to lack of appearance. Uh, item 34, application number 1510722, applicant Omid. And last name M O R A D S H A H I, continued to May 24th, 2016, pending receipt of original stipulation. Item number 35, application number 1510730, applicant J and A Grinding, Stephen Thompson, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 
36 through 39. Application numbers 15, 10893 through 15, 10895 and 15, 10897. Applicant Greg Mazza, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 40, application number 15, 11288, applicant Alfred, uh, spell the last name Q-U-I-R-O-Z, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 41, application number 15, 11290, applicant S. Tengren Dental Corporation, applicant Nancy Tengren, uh, removed from the agenda due to submission of a withdrawal. 43, item 43, application number 151335, applicant Diane Nepa, uh, continue to May 24th, 2016, pending, re pending receipt of original stipulation, uh, and that completes the agenda review. Recommend approval as read. I approve the uh, uh, agenda review as presented by the uh, clerk of the board. Right. Um, next item six. Right. Uh, okay. So I guess we'll go through the cases. Right. Well, so first, uh, six public comment. If if anybody has, I don't see anyone here that's not for an agenda item. So okay. I don't believe we have any public comments. Uh, and then hearing officer comments. Do you have any? I have not. All right. So, yeah, I'd recommend we just go through the remaining items in order for a status update starting with number eight. Okay. Uh, Louisa, uh, excuse me, Louise Roberts? Yes. Uh, are you prepared to go forth with your case today? Well, um, I'm asking for an extension. All righty. Um, the person I spoke to. Um, That's me. Uh, yeah, we uh, received uh, some information late last uh, this this week. No, last week. And uh, but it looks like we're. She actually has three different cases with one number, but it looks like we're moving towards settlement. So. Okay. So we want a continuation to. Uh, I guess the dates are available. June twenty eighth. Yeah, that would be good. June twenty eighth, right? Good for everybody. All right. Perfect. And she may not need to come back. Okay, then I guess the next item would be uh, number okay. twelve, uh, application fifteen one zero zero two four, Stanley Hubble. Uh, I believe that one was denied. I show item ten as yeah. our next item. Oh, I'm sorry. Apologize. You guys are free to go if you feel like it. Uh, Brian Esler. Uh, yes. Okay. Are you prepared to go forth today? All right. And the assessor? We're yeah. prepared to move forward. We anticipate about 10 to 15 minutes for our All case. Right. Okay. So I recommend we come back to this as the first hearing. Okay. Uh, okay, so that would take us next to item 15. Item 15 would be uh, Veronica Slavin. Case number uh, 15, 10124. That would be me. Yes. yes. Are you prepared to go for us today? I am, and I didn't send my confirmation in, so he recommended that I come back another day. Okay. Right. Confirmation was not submitted within 30 days, so a rescheduling is required for this case. All right. What is? The 24th would be correct for me. That's okay. fine. Two. All right. So we're going to continue to May 24th. Would I have to do another confirmation one? No, your appearance here is your confirmation that you'll okay. appear. You'll be sent a letter in the mail um, in a few days just confirming that this has been rescheduled, but this is considered your official notice that the case has been rescheduled. They'll be in this room at 9.30 a.m. on May 24th. Okay, thank you very much. May what? May 24th? Oh, May, oh, May 24th. Okay, 5.24. Do you approve the rescheduling, Hearing Officer Crow? I approve that, yes. All right. Okay. Um, uh, I have uh, number 21 next. All right. Uh, application 15-103-00, Ron Redlow. This uh, applicant contacted me a few days ago. Their uh, wife has serious medical issues and is getting uh, 
cancer treatment today. Um, so due to the medical issues, we recommend continuing. Um, she'll be in treatment for a while, so he thinks October 25th would be best. We recommend continuing this to October 25th, uh, 2016. Okay, that will be motion to be approved. Then. Give, give me just a second. All right. Uh, next, I have item number 23. Okay, application 15 10415, Michael Lipsky. Correct. Yes, sir. Are you prepared to go forward today? I am. Any assessor? We're not prepared to move forward. We have not received any uh, response to our 441D letter, so we need to get information from the applicant. Uh, the person handling your case is Efren Escora. I've got his card here, and you can contact him, so we need a continuance today. Okay. Do I give you guys this information? Uh, you can contact Efren uh, right after this hearing. Once we go through the agenda review, he's available. Yes. What uh, is your recommendation on the date? June 28th. Okay. Motion to move that to uh, can June 28th. We, is, is June 28th okay with the applicant? Um, I think so. Okay. All right. So are you, you approved the request to June 28th? June 28th. All exactly. right. Yes. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, next is 24 and 25. They're out in the hallway. Yeah. Gotcha. You guys have a seat here at the table. Okay. okay. See, see here? Yes. Okay, we're talking about application 15-10450 and 15-10451, Lima May. Lima. 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 Okay. Are you prepared to go forward with your case today? Yeah. And as, as a bit for her, she doesn't speak English. I'm just a translator for her. Okay. She doesn't speak much English. Mm -hmm. I guess that's acceptable. Yeah. They, uh, Applicants can bring their own translators. That's not a problem. And the assessor? We are not prepared to move forward today. We have not received information on report 41D that was requested, so we need to gather that information first from the applicant. All righty. So I'd like to continue to June 28th. Is that date acceptable to you uh, for moving the case forward to, to that date? Uh, why? Because I need uh... We send out a letter requesting information, mm -hmm. and we did not receive that information. So that we try to work out um, mm -hmm. some kind of mutual agreement between the assessor's office and the applicant prior to coming to the hearing officer. So we might be able to work something out without actually coming to the hearing. Oh, okay. And uh, no need of my I that tell me breeze three evidence something like that mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is not today. We need to see that also. So we will need to see that before we come to the hearing officer. Oh. Okay. Because so, we might resolve the issue without coming here. Oh, okay. So then. This is the appraiser that's assigned to your case. Uh huh. He's sitting right here. Okay. Oh. After we go through this review, he'll be able to talk to you for a few minutes. Oh, okay. Then, then you say move it to when? June twenty eighth. June twenty eighth. Is that acceptable? June twenty eighth. Yeah, probably. What what a day on that? It's a Tuesday at nine Tuesday. nine thirty a.m. Okay, all right. And uh, uh, talking to you for out there. We're going to do the you know, my way yeah. for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, wait, are you yeah. outside? Thank you. Okay. I approve that uh, motion to move to June twenty eighth on this on that case. <coughs> Two cases, I guess. All right. Uh, next, I have item number twenty seven. Application fifteen one zero four seven zero. ABC Audio Vision, You're present, and are you prepared to go forward today with your case? I did not uh, turn in the confirmation, and so I believe that we have to continue. Yes. And what date is acceptable? June 28th. Uh, that's, well, can we try? It is we may be able to resolve the issue without even coming to June. Okay, cool. Then June 28th. Thank you. Okay. If necessary, we can do another continuance. Perfect. Okay. 
approve a continuation of this case till uh, June 28th. Everyone's handling your case also. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you guys. Good. Do you want to wait? Don't mind waiting for me. Just oh sure. After the review. Oh my God, trust you. Okay. The. I just want to wait for the review. We're almost done. Uh, next, I have item 28 and 29. Application 15-10497 and 15-10498. Millerod Simic. Don't believe this applicant is here. I spoke to them on the phone last week. They were going to come in and request a rescheduling. Um, but they're not here. It's 15 after 9.30, so I'd recommend denial due to lack of appearance. Most to deny due to lack of appearance. Approved. Next, I have item 30. Third. Oh, yeah, go ahead and have a seat wherever sure. you feel comfortable. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, application 151546, RL and EM Richardson Trust. Yes, Steve Richardson. Steve Richardson. Are you prepared to go forward with your case today? Uh, no. I'd like to get uh, the extension. And what date would uh, this is some of the dates? Mm -hmm. May 24th. Is that the assessor? The assessor? We could do May 24th. Okay. Prove this case being changed, uh, rescheduled until May 24th. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, the person assigned to your case is Nadia Viveros. Okay. And here's her card. She's okay. available today. Okay. If you want to give her a call. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. All right. And next I have item number 42. All right. Application 15-11334. Kirby Pets. Present. Are you prepared to go forth with your case today? So we'd have to reschedule this one again. Uh, so uh, what date is acceptable? May 24th, uh, Could it be June 20, June 28th, if you don't mind? Okay, June 28th. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Approve moving this case to uh, June 28th. Okay. Uh, Mr. Escoto is also assigned to your case, so we can discuss it with him. Right. So that completes the agenda, and now we just have the one hearing left for item number 10. Uh, number 10. So, let's see. Mr. Elser, if you'd like to come yeah, up to the table and take a seat. Sure. If you don't mind climbing over the cord, you can get off this way. Yeah. Just a second, I'll hand out copies of the application. Here's the application. I have extra copies if anybody wants it. Is a uh, single family residence? It is. It's your home. Mm -hmm. Right, so the burden of proof is the assessor. Uh, would the assessor give us a little overview of the, uh, uh, the property? Um, a correction, uh, Miss, uh, does it matter? Just tell us. You want to oh, this is a rule two sale, uh, meaning that it was made in the open market <coughs> and the um, I believe with a rule two sale when we and we accepted his sale price, uh, that's the um, applicant shifts the burden of proof. Yeah, yeah so. at either at the beginning or in the middle. So, so as soon as we establish that we accepted sale price, then the burden of proof shifts. All right. We want to give us a little review well, of what can, the property. We is. can present first. Yeah. Either, you know, it doesn't matter to us. Yeah. Um, property is. Oh, hang on. Oh no! I'll get. I'll give these to you. Just try to get them out. Okay. Uh, do you have one for the mm -hmm. record? We do. Thank you. This will be marked Assessor's Exhibit A. So this is a base year um, appeal. 
uh, subject property was purchased on January 7, 2014, for $610,000. Uh, that value was enrolled by the assessor's office for 610. It was um, what's known as a rule two sale. That's an open market sale. You'll see further when we get to exhibits. We will show that that was listed on the multiple listing service, and there was. Um, professional <coughs> representation for both the buyer and the seller. Um, <coughs> the um, applicant's um, value is 543000 at the time of the application, and uh, that uh, property is um, <coughs> uh, located at 2697 San Miguel Drive. Okay. Um, so, and I'll just go ahead and, you want me to present it? I'm going to go ahead and present first. It's easier for the applicant. Anyway, uh, um, we used four, utilized four comps from that time uh, in the subject area. Um, there were, um, these are all um, homes from Thousand Oaks as is the subject. Uh, they show a, a, a actual physical range of from 599,900 at a low. 755,000 at a high. They show an adjusted range of 586.9 at a low and 658 at a high. The subject sold for 610 um, within that range. And so, um, as is per Rule 2, uh, the assessor's office um, through the Board of Equalization is um, commanded to. Uh, accept sales price when they are achieved in the market unless there's extreme ordinary circumstances that would indicate that that not be the case. Um, we did not find that to be the case and we found data relative to that sales price. Um, here's a picture of the columns on the map page. Further in the back is a copy of the listing. Um, the subject property at the time that it sold was listed for 625000 um, through negotiations. The uh, taxpayer was able to buy it for 610000 which is below the asking price. Um, the property was exposed to the market 44 days, which is a pretty good exposure. Um, and because of um, also the taxpayer was represented by a different broker. Than the, than the list of agent according to the MLS. And so it meets, more than meets um, all criteria. And because of that, we enrolled the sales price and in fact would have been um, not part of the equalization process. Um, I would tell you that high 90% of all Rule 2 sale prices in Ventura County are enrolled by the assessor's office. Um, with the encouragement of the Board of Equalization. Uh, this is sort of a, 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 a byproduct of Prop 13 in the sense that if there's a market sale, it's our obligation not to change it, but just to enroll it. And wherever it lies in the market is none of our business. It could be a high end, could be low end, could be right in the middle. Um, we just enrolled what the negotiating parties did themselves. And that's where we got the price. And data seems to support that, so that's why we did what we did. Thank you. And that's our case. Do you have any questions? Uh, my only question is, were these comps, these were just pulled out of the, the using that same window that I think I was... Yeah, the time using. window. Yeah, they're all time. Okay, within 90, it was 90 days after well, the, What we could, yeah, you go <laughs> up to 90 days after you purchased it. And in theory, any time before, but usually we keep it around six, seven months before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I did not. I, I didn't yeah. compare, but I don't know if I because I. That's really, exactly. That's what we did. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, no, no questions. No other further questions. Okay. I have no questions. Uh, if you want to go here, go ahead. Okay. Your presentation. Okay. And, and did you? I. I was. To bring copies, as yes. Thank you. I, I think I we, we spoke. I may have I may have looked at some of your data. Okay. Copy okay. the record. Yeah. Okay. So I, I had I had sent this in, and, and really my I just 
went and pulled um, the the. Well, I took the uh, first. I took just the um, homes that were using that same window. I used uh, homes that were sold no more than ninety days after, and then some homes. I, I think that there were a few, uh, two or three that were sold. Um, you know, within a within about a six month window or so. I, the the date of sale is on here, and then I. I uh, took the square footage, the sale price, and I averaged the price per square foot, and I pulled comparable homes within about a two-block, three-block radius of of my home, and that's how I came up with the estimate of the uh, 543 when I just took the, the averages, um, and they were so, it, and they were all based on a very similar condition, based on what I can tell in the. Um, Know, in, in the, um, I pulled the, the comps uh, online. Um, so, j attached really is just a, a pictures and the details of, of each of the homes. Um, but based on that, I and my the purchase price, I I um, did it. You know, in the six hundred and ten thousand purchase price, I felt that I unfortunately. Overpaid quite a bit for my home, and when I, I know I was represented by a realtor, but I think that realtor was driven by the um, commission rather than my best interest. And um, I, I know one of the requests I got was for the appraised value, the appraisal, and I didn't have a copy of that. I didn't go to my realtor to try to get a copy. I haven't been on. Wasn't on uh, speaking terms with my realtor. I, I will um, confirm that the appraise, it was appraised for my purchase price, um, the six hundred and ten thousand. Um, but it was, you know, it was from the bank. Um, I did have a um, a high down payment, so I don't know if that has an impact on the the purchase price or the uh, appraisal price or not. But um, it was probably a very safe loan for the bank to make. Um, but based on on that, and and I think the greed of my realtor, I, I was uh, I think I grossly overpaid for it, unfortunately, and um, was looking to uh, based on the the comps um, have the assessed value lowered at, at least to. Um, <clears throat> somewhere, you know, within the range of my of the estimated value, of, you know, based on the, the comparable homes in the area. Do you have any questions? Yes, we do. I just wanted to confirm something. Mm -hmm. um, you bought this with, and you did obtain a bank loan at the time of purchase. Is that correct? I did. Yeah. And that bank, um, as far as you know, appraised it for six hundred and ten thousand. We don't have a copy of that, but yeah, yeah it it was. Okay. Six hundred. Um, I have another question. You brought a lot of comps from that time period. Mm -hmm. They're from a slightly different neighborhood, although very close by. Yeah. Um, why didn't you purchase those comps or one of those instead of the home that you bought? Mm, it was probably just the layout. I mean, it, I really like the layout of, the of home your home that I bought. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I you know they were they're all within. I, it was. Two or three blocks. I mean, very close, but other than just taste. Okay, so but you could have purchased any of those homes, correct? Probably so. Yes, mm -hmm. but you chose to purchase yours instead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you look at any other homes while you were looking in that area? Uh, I did actually, and I I did, and I had an offer on a on another home, um, and I had backed out because of a similar. A situation where I I had made a purchase or I was in escrow. Um, I felt the pressure. I you know you got to buy it. It's going to go quick. Um, the inventory is, was low, and um, I did the uh, inspection and I decided to back out. And um, they tried to drop the price on me and I still backed out. It ended up going for forty thousand dollars less than. What I had gone into escrow for, and it should have been a clue to me then that I was, um, you know, a, a, 
that my realtor wasn't looking out for my best interest because it ended up going for quite a bit less than I had um, uh, been in, you know, been in escrow for. But you did shop around. I did. I did look around now, and there there wasn't much to shop around for because they're just the inventory was so low. But yes, I did. Now your home is near Wildwood Park. Yeah. Does it back directly to the park? A portion of it. it uh, yeah, yeah, okay. it does. Any of these other sales that you brought in, do those back directly to Wildwood Park? I, I don't know for sure. Um, I don't know for sure. Do you believe that backing to Wildwood Park is actually more desirable than not backing to Wildwood Park because of some isolation issues or seclusion? Um, I do. Yeah, probably so. Yeah. And you didn't do any adjustments for that within your sales comps? Uh, I did not. I don't. I don't know if some of these do or well. This the first one there probably does because it's right on my same street, just a couple doors down. So that one, that first one, comp number one does. Uh, yeah, and that was I'm assuming almost you know, nine months prior to your sale. Maybe, yeah, is yeah, it about seven, about eight months? Eight months, uh huh. Um, one other when, you, when you purchased the property, you did negotiate. In other words, you didn't pay in full price the property you eventually bought. Uh, I guess it would be a negotiation. Yeah, they, they backed out. The one you bought, the one, this one that you actually purchased, uh, 20. 697 San Miguel. They credited me for work that needed to be done. So you were able to, you paid less than full with the price. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I have no further questions. Good luck. Well, the thing I've uh, noticed kind of that the assessor's comps and your comparables are, uh, there's, I don't see a one on that are, uh, Similar, shall we say? So, uh, and of course, the assessor's contention is that uh, which is that your uh, area is superior to uh, what you've used for comparable sales. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, the assessor mentioned that uh, the proximity of that Wildwood Park uh, evidently makes a difference in market value in this area. Question. Yeah, it's just a comment, I guess. Are these yeah. in the same area? I'm, I, I didn't. I don't know. Yeah. If yeah. There's an aerial. There is an aerial map. Yeah. Uh, six pages in. Yeah. It shows where the subject is and where our comparables are. These aren't, these aren't in my same, I, I picked them right in my general neighborhood. These are surrounding neighborhoods. Um, yeah. These are within maybe a couple of miles. I think I was in within like two, three blocks. I know that's a high end. This is a pretty high end area here. I'm the blue, right? That's, that's me. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you believe your house has gone up or down since you purchased it? To this day, oh, I think it's gone up just like every other house has. Okay. All right. But is that relevant to? I mean, because we're we're talking if we're looking in that the mm. time of my purchase versus, you know, that's two and a half years ago. I mean, you can almost have bought any home and it would have gone up. Um, actually, it, it it's not truly relevant to the data in question. Yeah. Okay. I just. Yeah, it's curious. But yes, I mean it's okay. But I did pull, you know, I mean, if we looked at the streets I pulled, they're right in this circle, right in my neighborhood. These are, and that's that's, a, that's probably two three miles away. You know, to get for, the, for these homes here, um, and I do know these are some nice. These are some. 
much higher end neighborhood. Yes, I should point out that <coughs> comps two and four um, in our comparables do back to open space to the like his, albeit a different part of the park. Wildwood Park kind of meanders, and there's also a mixture of Wildwood Park and quote open space that's kind of all interconnected. And our comp two, which is um, I probably should have mentioned that's why I picked comp two and four, and it. Um, Per se, he doesn't make an adjustment, but probably he answered the question that, that uh, Mr. Myers brought up, which is there's more desirability there. Mr. Uh, hearing Officer Code, just a reminder before you close the hearing, the applicant does have the right to make any final statements if they yeah, have the burden. We have proof, a, so I don't want to accept each, we each side does. Uh, so you accepted we the accepted burden. We accepted burden of proof. Okay, I, I misunderstood. I thought you uh, we were, put, gave them the burden, but were just technically. I, I didn't for future whatever. Probably it's kind of a. So the assessor accepted the burden. Yeah. Okay. We'll then go, the we'll assessor go. has the right to make any final yeah. statements. Right. Both sides have. Both. Right. right, but who? Sorry. Both rights have. But whoever has the burden of proof it has the right to the final statement. Oh, that's so probably true. That's why I just want to make sure. Once it, what it, I, I want to go first because with homeowners, I like to make them comfortable anyway. I'd rather go first, not make them scared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Personal taste. Yeah. Uh, do you want to make your presentation? Uh, he, he did. Uh, yeah, okay. oh, the closing statement. Closing statement. Yeah. Okay. With that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, Please, uh, no, I yeah. just, I mean, just in, you know, comparing the comp, I mean, I really tried to put, pull the comparable neighborhoods. I just, I'm not familiar with the ones in the, the one and the three as much, uh, slightly the one, but I know this, that two and four are just higher end, but, so I'm not sure if they're real fair comps. Um, just looking at the pictures, are, they're nice. I mean, I try to stay very close and very similar. So um, that's probably why the homes I've got listed on my comparables are, are less. Um, but I mean, yes, the closest one right on my street, right on the, the same side of the street, was, you know, uh, almost $100,000 less. And unfortunately, I made a decision. It was not a great it was probably based on taste and a little bit of pressure and I you know I you know realtors I don't think yes they're there to represent the buyer but I think they're also driven by a commission and a sale and you know I made a mistake and that's kind of where I'm where I'm at now okay. Mr. Denham you want to yeah. comment just a second Uh, the assessor's office accepted his sales price under uh, preponderance of evidence based on Rule 2. Um, rule 2 dictates that if a property sells on the open market, then the sales price is considered fair market value unless there's a preponderance of evidence that it is not. Preponderance of evidence means that we can show comparables that are more than 5% outside of the range of the sales price. Um, with our comparables, his sales price falls well within the range. Looking at his comparables, the top of the range is $579,000. Uh, that's just $500 below a 5% deviation from the 610, and therefore is, in our opinion, close enough to the range, especially when you consider the fact that his comparables are not adjusted as directed by Rule 4. We feel that the assessor's office enrolled the purchase price and that that was fair market value at the time and wish that you would sustain our value. Okay, that concludes the, uh, the hearing, and uh, I'll take uh, this information under advisement, and then uh, the clerk will notify you of my decision. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, hearing Officer Crow, let's see. You can, if you're free to adjourn the meeting. It is now 10, 10 a.m. Oh, okay. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Are we off the record? Uh, I don't know for sure. I'll, uh...